I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the mashup of AI and blockchain through a project called OpenMind, um, which is probably the biggest buzzword salad ever, but uh, while that's probably the reality in the short term, I think long term it'll actually amount to a lot. Um, a little bit of background on me, uh, I'm a computer scientist by academic training. I co-founded Coinbase a couple years ago, and uh, I think it's a really interesting project. So the background I think other people have given pretty decently already. Um, the idea is that data is increasingly becoming a valuable resource. Uh, in fact, the most valuable companies in the world are basically massive data monopolies at this point. And, uh, they often use that data to serve their own best interests as for-profit companies, not ours. Um, and that power is only growing. These are now natural network effects-based businesses with monopolies where Google and Facebook own about 70% of all ad revenue on the internet and that's only growing. Um, so again, these are the most valuable companies in the world now. Um, and if you look at, generally speaking, what AI development is held back by, it tends to be mostly data. And it's uh, no coincidence that these mega companies are open sourcing their algorithms, but not their data as a result, because that's the moat. Um, so at the end of the day, I think it's all about the incentives. Uh, it's obvious why these companies would hold back the data, because that is their competitive advantage. It's what's supporting their multi-hundred billion dollar market capitalizations. And um, I think if you, if you step back for a second and look at what has created the vast majority of the wealth creation in Silicon Valley over the last 15 years, it's been exactly this. It's been um, companies building massive network effects based businesses on the data monopolies they have around a particular problem, whether it's Uber with riders and drivers or, or Twitter with what we're saying or um, Facebook with our photos and our social graphs, LinkedIn, again, the same, but for, for professional stuff. It's all, it's all the same theme. Um, and generally speaking, technology tends to go through these sort of 15 year cycles of value creation in one layer, a commoditization of that layer, and then subsequent value creation in another layer. So you could imagine that was hardware before uh, that was standardized back, back with IBM, and then it went to um, software, which was kind of the Microsoft reigning era, and then we got open source software on the web, which entered the network um, and data era that we're in today, and I think we're kind of coming to the end of that, that you can imagine that started around Google's creation or 99 or 2000, we stand here about 15 years later, and it seems like the time is ripe to commoditize the data layer and push uh, value creation even further up, which is what I think effectively blockchain-based tokens and networks are doing, and AI is likely to do as making sense of what will become sort of this massive open trove of data. So, um, if, we're, if we're able to sort of turn these data monopolies on their head, wouldn't it be amazing if we had systems that would incent everyone who has really solid data towards a particular problem to bring that to the problem and make some kind of a model or an intelligence uh, much better? And you can imagine that um, that dynamic, much like what we've seen with the bootstrapping of computational power in a network like Bitcoin, could be super powerful. Um, it's sort of this grassroots thing where you, when, when you get everyone an eco economic incentive to do something, it turns out that like they actually do it. And you could end up creating models that are far more powerful than any centralized player ever could as a result of that dynamic. So that's, that's, one, that's one part of it. I think a second part that's really important is preserving privacy. Um, so you can imagine creating these systems in ways where people can get really effective models. Imagine like a recommender system, for example, without having to give away their underlying data. Um, and the sub point of that would be that these systems work, tend to work more for people rather than people working for the systems. Um, so how can we make this work? Um, I think the devil is really in the details in making this, this paradigm shift work. Uh, the biggest problem is what I would call the free rider problem, which is effectively a way of saying um, if somebody makes their data available to, for example, make a model smarter, then what's to say that somebody doesn't, especially in a blockchain-based world, right, where um, 
the default at the moment is that all data is public. You can go on a block explorer and view all these transactions, view all these smart contracts, right? Uh, how do you prevent people from just taking the data and using it over here or taking a trained model if that happened to be hosted on a blockchain and using it over here? Um, and I think that really informs the construction of, of how you make a system like this. And then what about privacy? Again, as I said, um, you can view all of these things publicly. Um, so where do blockchains come in? I think they're really useful for provable computation. At the end of the day, if you're, if you're constructing a system where you want to provably know how much value you provided to this model, then a blockchain is a good way of, of doing that. Um, the second is, it's convenient because it has programmatic global payments. So uh, if there's a model that is making money on chain, it can redistribute potentially its profits to those who made it smarter, as was mentioned earlier, in sort of this, this mutual ownership type model. Um, so this is either scan, just a block explorer to show how public these things uh, are, depending on how you construct them. So we have a few tools, federated learning, uh, secure computation. Um, there are multiple options in the blockchain space for that at the moment. So homomorphic encryption is sort of like the holy grail that uh, is probably furthest away. Uh, the others that are becoming more popular are various types of zero knowledge proofs. So Zcash has kind of popularized those, but Ethereum continues to work on those more and more. There's a new company called uh, Starkware that is, is a research lab specifically dedicated to making those much faster. Um, and then multi-party computation is another version of this. So there are a couple different uh, protocols that are trying to use um, that are trying to use that. Enigma was an early version from MIT for those who are familiar. Um, and then obviously using some kind of a Turing complete uh, uh, scripting language based blockchain like Ethereum. It doesn't have to be Ethereum, but that's probably the furthest along at the moment. Um, so OpenMind. Uh, OpenMind is an open source project that is trying to construct such a system. Um, the gist of it, and I guess I should preface this by saying, I don't think this is a solved problem yet as to the best way to construct a system, but I think these are sort of the general directions um, that should be thought about. So uh, a, you could imagine a, a simple way of doing this is hosting uh, a model in something like IPFS, so a distributed file store where the hash exists on chain. People can download this model or a share of the model potentially depending on how you set up the secure multi-party computation, train it locally on their data, and then re-upload their gradients in a sense making the model smarter. Um, again, I think this sort of thing could create something that's better than any centralized competitor. Um, it, it can be highly personalized while retaining privacy. So the, the good thing about something like multi-party computation is, again, you don't have to give over all of your data um, in order to have a model train for you that is personalized to you. Um, and it has this nice property that you could imagine a system that ends up being mutually owned rather than monopolistic. So instead of um, somebody like Google creating an ultra powerful recommender system for ads for you, for example, uh, you could actually be a part owner, literally in a multi-party compute sense, you could, you could hold one of the shares in a Shamir's uh, key sharing kind of schema whereby the model actually might even need you to function in the first place. So you're, you could be substantially more in control than you otherwise might be. Um, I think there, so there are a lot of other interesting kind of crypto primitives that I think will be combined with these sorts of ideas. One uh, is called token curated markets. It's basically a fancy way of saying, how can we have a sort of information feed or a news feed? Something that looks like a subreddit would be a simple way to think about it, um, where the content is, uh, the, the control of the feed, rather, is tokenized and sort of mutually owned and curated. So you can imagine a system where uh, people are creating this information feed where everybody as a token holder of the feed has an incentive to attract more attention by making the feed as good as possible so the value of the tokens goes up. And your token ownership roughly corresponds to your ability to curate items in the feed. Um, I think this is really interesting because 
it provides a way to directly monetize these sorts of um, intelligences and models. Uh, it gives you a way for um, a model to effectively ingest a bunch of data, spit out what is effectively a recommended list or recommender system of some kind, and then directly generate value in the form of on-chain assets. I think the more you think about the construction of these systems, the more you realize how, how valuable it is to create um, as closed loop of a system as possible. In other words, I think right now, uh, the thing that tends to separate blockchain-based projects that function pretty well early and work early from those that don't are the extent to which they need to go outside of the blockchain realm, do things that are exogenous to the blockchain. And when you have to do that, things get messy. You start to run into the oracling problem, a lot more trust problems, all these things, right? So another reason I think this idea is really interesting is um, it allows the model to directly act on chain. In other words, you can imagine that a model can directly make recommendations to something like a token curated market. Not only can it take action directly on chain as opposed to have to go do something in the quote unquote real world, um, the, the loop for the whole system becomes much more closed because the output of the model is a financial asset itself on chain. So in other words, if you're imagining a bunch of people contributing to making one of these models smarter, then this model can autonomously and on-chain go and take an action. The reward of that action is an on-chain asset, which can programmatically turn around and pay the people who made the model smarter. So you can imagine if this, th that this feedback loop actually works much better and much more cleanly than an alternative where perhaps, um, you know, like it was a healthcare example here earlier, you have to like, go and perform a trial and see what the results of that trial were and all that happens off chain, right? And then it's like, it's unclear what the value to the model was, like how do you quantify, like how valuable was this, thus how do you, how do you effectively reward people? Here, you're literally producing tokens programmatically that get fed back to the people who made the thing smarter and it can all happen in this encapsulated manner. Um, and I think that the more people dig into these models, the more um, that will become a critical component of what is likely to work early versus not. Um, so a little bit, a little bit about uh, Open Mind, um, which I think is uh, a really interesting project that's going after this. Um, they've built a simple proof of concept on Ethereum. It used homomorphic encryption, so it was pretty slow, but it worked. Um, at the moment, they're building a compute network on top of Unity for uh, machine learning. They're building libraries in, in Unity for machine learning. The idea here being you can, Unity goes across a bunch of devices basically, so you could imagine a scenario where people are just leaving their PlayStation or their Xbox on while they go to class and they're earning a little bit of crypto for, um, for hooking that compute power up to, to such a problem like this. And then ultimately you get to uh, the secure computation part, so like designing a multi-party compute network which is non-trivial, but um, if you look at uh, different systems that are trying this, like TrueBit um, is an example on Ethereum, there's pretty rapid progress being, being made. So OpenMind's an open source community. Um, it's grown a lot. Uh, the last hackathon they had was on a Saturday on January 13th. They had 69 pull requests and 400 people in a bunch of different locations around the world. Um, and they've gone to about, from zero to 100 contributors on GitHub in about four months. So it's growing pretty well and it's all over the world. Um, that's all I have for today. I, I guess um, while, while these things seem like a bit early and a little bit um, futuristic at the moment, I do think they'll happen over time. It's just a matter of getting all of the mechanisms correct and uh, Perhaps the biggest gating mechanisms are the actual throughput of blockchains themselves, which I think we will scale over the next couple of years, and the scalability and the speed of some of these secure computation methods, which is why they're looking at something like secure computation through multi-party computation right now, because that tends to be one of the faster options out there. But at the end of the day, um, I would be surprised if we're not standing here in 15 years and uh, the, the most powerful uh, intelligences or models are not made in the same sort of crowdsourced way 
because ultimately it seems like sourcing data or models from everyone rather than from closed silo companies um, is the winning strategy, and it's just a matter of time until we get there. Thanks.